So first of all, thank you for being here and thank you for the information that you extended to uh, members of the board today. Um, I know that you've been associated uh, with the DMRF for a number of years and uh, our former um, participant in the Medical Scientific Advisory uh, Council. Um, and in the years that you've been involved with uh, research in the field of dystonia, what have you learned and where do you think we're going? So, uh, first of all, thank you for having me here. It's always been a pleasure to work with the uh, foundation and to uh, share our success and our failure and move forward all together. Uh, so as you mentioned, I've been working uh, very closely with the foundation and on the Estonia Research for many years. And in fact, I am working on the Estonia because of the Estonia Medical Research Foundation uh, initially funded my fellowship and I haven't stopped since then. Uh, so I was fascinated by, uh, by the problem of dystonia and at the same time puzzled by the clinical features and lack of treatment for uh, uh, beneficial treatment at the time for patients with dystonia. And I decided I really wanted to understand uh, what's going on in the brain that leads to dystonia in a way that we could hopefully intervene with the treatment to, uh, to treat the disease, to reverse it or to prevent it. Uh, the uh, strategy that they took to do that is uh, there are many different things that can cause dystonia. There are many different causes. It comes in many different shapes and flavors. And I decided just to concentrate mostly on one of them. Not that because that's more important than any other, but because I felt that if we understood one form of dystonia really well, we could use that knowledge to understand the rest. So I started with uh, one of them, genetic products called BY1 dystonia. And what I have been working on all these years is in trying to understand how the mutations in the gene uh, that encodes for this protein known as torsine, uh, that mutation ends up with the human being having this tone, like what's in between them. Uh, and I view this as a big puzzle. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the beginning, in the first few years, we were trying to find pieces of the puzzle, uh, which is basically understanding where torsine is in the cell, uh, in what neurons is, is important when in development in children or in adults is uh, dystonia expressed in the brain. How does af uh, torsion affect the function of a neuron? And we have collected a good number of pieces of that puzzle now, not obviously me, but many other researchers. What we're trying to do now is, uh, while we still want to collect more pieces, we're starting to put them together. Uh, and we have started doing that in the last few years. Uh, uh, and by putting these pieces together, we're starting to get the feeling that there is a picture there. There is something we might be able to see. And when we see that, we will uh, be able to understand what causes dystonia and how to treat it. Uh, in fact, the way that uh, you know, I started, as I mentioned, with only BYD1 at the beginning, more recently I asked the question, uh, is there anything in common between BYD1, one genetic form of dystonia, and BYD6, a completely different genetic form of dystonia, with completely different genes, do they actually at some point have the same effect on the brain? Uh, and if they do, is there a way that we can intervene with the treatment that may apply to both of them? So uh, that work was funded by the final work from the Estonian Medical Research Foundation. And we have identified a very uh, exciting biological pathway that's abnormal both in uh, models and cells and animals of BYD1 and also BYD6. Uh, so we're very excited because they both diseases have abnormalities in this pathway, uh, maybe one treatment will apply to many different patients with dystonia. So my main interest more recently has been to cluster different forms of dystonia in groups that could be treated by the same treatment or attacked by the same treatment. And like I said, that's been the, the, uh, the result of the, the final work and, uh, that led to more support from the Department of Defense, which was also a result of advocacy efforts by the foundation. So we've been linked together from the beginning, the foundation, the foundation and I, and I think we will for the rest of my career. Well, thank you for all of your efforts. And I think one other thing that the Soviet community needs to know is that you and others in the field go well beyond uh, the work that you do in your labs and, uh, and, and all the efforts that you put in. For example, uh, I know that you were a, a team member of the uh, DMRF um, marathon team uh, in New York City. Um, 
I think that shows a tremendous amount of respect, not only to the work that you do, but to your feelings for the community. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So again, it is, we have the same goal. And there are many different ways to get to that goal. And just because I am a neurologist and I, I do neuroscience in the lab, that doesn't mean that's the only thing, the only way I can promote, uh, uh, move the field forward to try to get to the goal that we all have in common. Uh, which is Cure Dystonia and the Eliminated Dystonia Medical Research Foundation. That's what we all want, right? So uh, it's very interesting when I agreed to run the New York Marathon how uh, the foundation was very, very grateful to me, uh, uh, you know, thanking me multiple times for running to raise funds, but I was actually thanking the DMRF for giving me the opportunity to run the New York uh, Marathon to actually raise funds for you. So I think we're we're like a big family, we're like a big team, we all have the same goal, and anything that we can do to get there faster, I think we can all do. There are things we can do, things that we can, but whatever I can do to help basically people with dystonia have a better quality of life, I will do, because that's a goal that I set at the end of my training, and I'm a stubborn Spanish, and when I set to do something, I will never quit. I will keep working on it until I, I get there. So, Thank you on behalf of the foundation, on behalf of the Estonian community. Well, thank you, my pleasure. Thank you very much.